Well, I keep thinking I'm done writing about my life, but it seems I just can't escape the paranormal life. I wonder why. But seriously, things just keep coming up. And not having human friends who understand what I'm dealing with makes it kind of difficult for people to sympathize with you. Alright, with my boo-hoo I get to talk to amazing things on a daily basis, pity party over. Let me get into why I've returned. Well, the thing that chased off Jeff was apparently the ghostly manager at my job that I was seeing from time to time. That's what I'm assuming anyway, because when I came to work on my Monday morning shift, on Sunday night, depending on how you look at it, I saw the ghost manager type guy again. Except he no longer had the blade in his chest. Instead, he was standing at the entrance, knife in hand. Since the guy I was taking over for was at the register, I tried to act as normal as possible. To my surprise, the guy just stood there as I passed him. As if he were on lookout duty for whatever reason. Unfortunately, this night didn't go as smoothly as usual. For the first couple of hours, it was normal. But that's when my normal night of boring routine ended. Remember when I said nothing paranormal ever happens at my job? Well, at around 2am, the man who had been standing at the entrance since I arrived moved for the first time. He advanced his stance as if to prepare for battle using the chef's knife. I just shrugged it off and figured he was re-experiencing what he did before he died or something like that. I mean, ghosts probably do that, right? About five minutes later, however, I learned that I was entirely incorrect in my assumption, as something suddenly bashed against the doors with the might of Zeus. I only nearly pissed myself as I turned to the glass doors that somehow hadn't shattered. Something I had never seen before was bashing against the side of the building. It was like a 30 foot long worm, or about 9 meters if you don't use Imperial. It was about the width of your average car and had teeth only comparable to that of a Megalodont. Like some kind of oversized dildo with teeth. It was repeatedly bashing the length of its body against the saw, yet somehow not damaging it in the slightest. Then I noticed the ghost with the knife in its hand. There appeared to be some kind of blue energy coming from its knife. After about five minutes of this, the giant worm-like thing crawled ridiculously fast into the distance. Then the man opened the door and left. I haven't seen him since and I have no idea what he is. My shift ended around eight and I was only slightly traumatized from the whole ordeal. I came home hoping to have a relatively normal situation at home. However, fate had different plans, it seemed, to like to mess with me like that. When I opened the door, it appeared that my good pal Slendy had another party that night and was passed out drunk yet again. Except no one else was home. I went to the bathroom expecting to see Jeff or one of Terry's other buddies, but fate hated me that day, so no such luck. It was yet another thing that I had never seen before, like some kind of abyss creature thing. Pitch black, with no discernible features aside from a sort of humanoid shape. Yeah, nope. I don't know why everyone is always in this bathroom, and I definitely don't want to deal with you right now. What he- The voice was strange. That's the only way I can describe it. Are you that human that Terry spoke of? Most likely, why? Asked with slight irritation. Well, it seems you're a rather intriguing specimen. Would you like to come with me? I'd love to try- Look, man, I'm pretty sure I just looked death in the face, not even yesterday. And then I had to go through a full shift of work with it in my head. If you want to take me somewhere, you're going to have to use force. I'm out, I said, turning around afterwards. He started again. Wait, I know things that you will find too valuable to pass up on. I bit. Well, what do you know about me? Oh, seeing man, I mocked. His tone became what I assumed to be sinister, but it was only a slight difference. I'll know of your true love. I'll know of Jane. The mention of her name from this thing sent chills down my spine. What do you know of her? I don't want to talk about it with a therapist. You think I want to talk about it with you? Some guy I just met in all black I met a minute ago? I said, tears beginning to well up in my eyes. He continued. I understand your suffering. I stopped him yet again, anger catching in my throat and tears falling on my face. What do you know of having someone you love with all your heart being ripped away from you? You probably just want to kill me. Why else would you call me a specimen? 
Why else would you want me to come with you? I have no idea who you even are. This guy was really starting to piss me off. Just then, Terry came over. Damn it, Shato! I told you to leave before eight! The thing apparently named Shato explained. Hold on, I have an explanation, seriously. Terry listened. After you explained your roommate, it sounded as though he was upset. Saddened by something. I wanted to hit- Terry cut him off this time. Yeah, no shit. But that doesn't give you the right to see what's going on in his mind. Now get out before you regret staying! Shatter then suddenly left the bathroom and exited the apartment. Terry then spoke up. Look, man, I heard him bring up a name. I heard you start getting emotional and decided to step in. I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but I'm not just a child murderer. I care about those I know. I suspect you moving in here had something to do with whatever you just got so worked up about. Whatever it was, you can talk to me when you're feeling ready. I nodded and headed to my room. I woke up hours later with my arm feeling like a thousand fire ants were biting into it all at once. I saw Terry sitting on the couch watching High School DxD. Of course he would be into that of all things, I thought. Hey, T-Man. You mind if I spill my goods to you about what was bugging me earlier? Terry responded with, What do you mean? You know, the guy in the bathroom started talking to me and I started to cry. Terry seemed surprised and paused the show. I have no idea what you're talking about, man. When you got home, you just had this glazed look in your eye and headed straight to your room. You didn't even pay me any mind, which I thought was a bit strange. About an hour later, I heard you crying in your room, so I turned my show up. I responded a little confused. What about Shato and the mind reading thing? I don't know anyone named Shato, and I don't know anyone who can read people's minds. He remarked, a little concerned. Hey, how's your arm feel? What, this one? I raised my bandaged arm. I mean, it feels like it's perpetually in flames of hell, but aside from that, he cut me off. Oh boy, that's not a good sign. You likely hallucinated the scenario after you came home once you were deep in your subconscious. Then when you were asleep, it must have continued to fill in the gaps. I'll explain more after I get you some help. After saying that, he threw me over his shoulder and took me to my car, pulling my keys out of my pocket and starting it up. Even after pushing the seat back all the way, his knees nearly touched the steering wheel. Where are we going? I asked, beginning to feel weird all over my body. You're slurring your words. I'm assuming that you're wondering where we're going. He asked with a tinge of worry in his voice. They're going to some guy I know. He can fix what happened. Hopefully. I didn't understand what he meant. I didn't think I was slurring my words. It sounded normal to me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I definitely had it that time. Look, just focus on your breathing. You'll probably start hallucinating again shortly. Just remember, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. As if on cue, I began to think I was at work. I started remembering, or maybe hallucinating? What I was experiencing at work that day, in exact replay, it felt like I was there just like before. I won't go into it again since I already explained what happened, but after the experience I remembered. Breathe in and breathe out. And I did just that. Afterwards, I floated back to consciousness. I was laying in my bed. Wait, what? where am I? It felt like a fever dream. Terry responded in a calm voice. There's no need to worry, everything's okay. I think you just had a nightmare, man. You're still at the apartment. Where else would you be? I replied in a panic daze. What about going to fix my arm? What? Something wrong with your arm? I thought about it and looked at my bandaged arm. My arm felt like it was on fire, then you took me to the car and... I trailed off. Well, that must have been one hell of a lucid dream you had. I haven't heard you say anything about your arm lately. I contemplated what he said. So, my arm's fine then? I don't see why it wouldn't be. Want to play something before you go to work? I'm kind of bored. Yeah, sure. I responded, still feeling the effects of whatever dream I just had. What time is it? He said without hesitating. What? I said it's 10pm. 
He didn't wait for me to finish my question, like he knew what I was going to ask. Yeah, sure, let's play something. Anything specific you want to play? I was thinking either Halo or Cod. Oh, come on, you always whoop my ass at those. Just after saying that, there was a muffled voice seemingly coming from the ceiling. Are you still in there? Terry? Is that you? I questioned both the Terry next to me along with the ceiling Terry. How are you doing that with your voice? Ceiling Terry responded. Remember, in through the nose, out through the mouth. As he said that, I realized something. Something important. I had yet to take a single breath since I woke up. How's that possible? I've been talking to the apartment, Terry, but I hadn't taken a single breath. Unless... I took a breath and awoke again. This time, however, everything felt normal. It felt right. I sat up feeling a slightly less aggravating burn in my left arm. I looked around. It looked like a hospital room that hadn't seen a patient in ages. Then to my right, I saw Terry. And to my left... The same guy I'd seen in the bathroom in the hallucination after work. That's the guy! That shadow from my hallucination! I blurted out, with no control over my voice. Shadow laughed. Is that the name your subconscious gave to me? Human brain is truly a curiosity, behold. Terry spoke up. His name isn't Shadow. It's Jacob. I nearly pissed myself hearing that name. I nearly pissed myself hearing that name. The skinwalker, Jacob. Suddenly, shadows dropped from around him, and I immediately recognized him. <sighs> Why, hello there, Jacob. Good to see you again. Hello there. Don't worry. Terry brought me here to help. Like, you going to eat me now so I no longer have to suffer kind of help? Sadly, no. He wanted me to tell you something. What did he want you to tell me? Remember, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just then I remembered to breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Wait, did I really need to? I mean, this felt real. So what if this is just a hallucination trying to get me to fall victim to it again? Do you know why Terry chose me for this job? I simply responded, No. Why? Simply put, you fear me more than anything else. More than Terry, more than Jose, more than any other paranormal thing you've run into. Because of this fear, he was sure I would know what was necessary when you began to question reality itself. So I will give you two options. You stay here and I rip the skin from your flesh as us skinwalkers do. Or you can breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and everything will be solved. I'll give you a little push towards one of those options if you choose to stay. I won't kill you before taking your skin. I made my decision almost immediately and took a breath through my nose and out through my mouth. Afterwards I hesitated as I woke up in the same room as before. I took a breath through my nose and out through my mouth, just to test the waters. Nothing changed. My arm had a normal pain in it now. To my right again, Terry. To my left, I saw Void Jacob. At this point, though, I wasn't sure of my subconsciousness doing it again. Then I heard a voice from behind me. Would you look at that? Bears the presence of Jacob was enough to do it. Some guy with a British accent I had never heard before said. And who exactly are you? I asked, kind of getting annoyed of introductions from the last few weeks. I'll let him... Um... He trailed off. You're going with Terry now, right? Terry nodded. Okay, I'll let Terry explain since he was so worried about you. Terry did a motion with his head like he was rolling his eyes at that suggestion. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I was going to explain this to you before, but suddenly you just went delirious saying a bunch of weird stuff I didn't understand. As this explanation began, Jacob decided none of this was worth his time and left the room. I had removed all of the rake's teeth and figured it couldn't injure even a human with its bite. When I saw all the blood when I got home, I figured it just scratched up your left arm pretty bad. I mean, hell, I wasn't expecting its gums to be sharp enough to pierce skin. 
A rake's saliva has venomous properties that slowly lure its prey back if it manages to escape. The venom directly attacks the brain and causes hallucinations. The venom only slowly kills humans and gives them hallucinations. The only way to completely save someone from a rake bite is to use the antivenom. Then comes in the mental stabilization after the antivenom has begun to neutralize the venom and begins to eat away faster. The only way to survive after that is to mentally stabilize the person so their immune system can work with the antivenom. He apparently finished. I responded in a state of exhaustion. Man, you're such a nerd. So, how do I know this isn't a hallucination? Do you really think your brain could have come up with a solution like that? Touché. So, can we leave now? The voice from behind me spoke up again. As your doctor, I can't really allow you to leave. Did his accent really just go from British to Southern, or was that my imagination? You must get some more rest. The venom is yet to be fully neutralized and may still have some residual effects. Back to British. What's up with this guy? Alright, Doc. Not sure did I call you, my good sir. I responded sarcastically. Apparently he didn't catch the obviously rhetorical question. You may call me doctor and nothing else. His accent went back to sudden. I didn't understand this guy at all. Well then, Doc, how- It's doctor, not Doc! And this guy could not maintain one accent or the other. Well then, doctor, how long will I have to stay here? I asked with enough sass that'd probably get me killed on the spot had Terry not been there. If you keep giving me an attitude, I could just kick you out right now. I considered it, then looked to Terry who just shook his head no. Alright, sorry. How long will I have to stay here, doctor? I asked with sincerity this time. Just a few more hours should do it. Wait, what day is it? Also, what's the time? Terry responded this time. It's Wednesday, my dude, and it's 10pm. I already called your boss and told him you were sick and needed a couple days off. We conversed back and forth for the next few hours whilst Doc was doing other things. Probably other projects. That wouldn't be surprising for a paranormal doctor. Something was bugging me for those few hours, though. His appearance. He looked so familiar, but I couldn't tell where from. He was wearing a bird-like mask, an all-black coat, and a leather-like black skin suit, but not quite skin tight. I still can't quite place where I recognized the attire from. He looked like a medieval plague doctor, of course, but that's not what it was. He looked like an entity I couldn't place the name on. Anyway, after I was finally sent home, we got into my car and Terry drove us home. I thanked him as we pulled into the parking spot and I headed straight to my room. His door was wide open, but at the time I didn't even think to look into it. I was too tired and just wanted to sleep, really. I'll try to keep you guys updated whenever something happens. Also, I promise I'll try to remember to check the posters when I get another chance.